All right. So unfortunately, I, I always have really cool 80s music. Y you all have been on my trainings before. Do you want me to sing? Oh, where were you at? Come on. I need backup dancers. Every backup dancer always. Come on. No, no, no. You screwed up. You have no idea what you just did to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Come on, baby. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> I got moves. I got really good moves. Uh, you're, you're looking at the singer. <laughs> yeah. And as you can tell, you know. All right. So anyway, so Medicare, Medicare, here we go, guys. Let me get my, uh, yeah, who's excited about Medicare? Somebody? Hey, there you go. Come on, baby, bring it, bring it. That's why I do that. Okay. Um, so we all know there's a lot of potential with Medicare, and it's getting better every single year. Um, I come from a PNC background. Prior to PNC, I was military, um, and in, in my history of PNC, I've always had to deal with commission cuts, making less and less money. Well, with Medicare, we're making more and more money. So I'm going to talk about the money here in a minute. Okay. Um, but uh, let me get this thing going here. Sorry. Okay. I wanted to share if I can get it going. Okay. So we created this mastermind. All right, and so for some of you guys who are wondering, when you get to a certain level, we're gonna want you to join us at a, a we, we called it the Elite Agent Mastermind. And when you get to, you know, we, we set some qualifications on this and they're pretty high, 500 MAPDs. Anybody wanna guess how much money you're making if you got 500? 7,500 minimum. Beautiful, exactly, a month, not a year. Okay, you're over six figures at that point. You have 1,000 ACA policies. Now, you don't have to have all, all those qualifications, but one of a thousand AP for an agent or a million of annualized premium or 300,000 of premium as an agent to be there. All right. So we're trying to meet once a year and we're really trying to at that point, you've got money to do things. OK, you're, you're, you've, you've kind of gotten out of the little struggle level that all of us agents go through. So at that point, we start talking about where are you gonna take your agency at that point. Um, these are some of the meetings that we had. Uh, we're not gonna get sound in it, but we're in a private room having a conversation about the agency. Everybody's sharing their numbers at that point. It's, it's, a, it's a really good environment. So the reason I have it there is so that you guys know that when you get to a certain point, there's, there's, there's more, there's always more. Um, if you look at my chicken scratch, that is my agency. I have a nine person agency. I have a pretty big, you know, I consider big for myself, a nine staff agency at my office. It's like having nine kids. They all got problems. They all whine, they all cry. They all, you know, why, why did you do that? Well, he got to come in 10 minutes later. Why can't I come in? They're like little kids. They're adults, but they're kids. Um, so I've got a very departmentalized agency. Um, and it works. It works. Um, in 08, I was gone for nine months with the military. And uh, my, in 08, what happened in 08? Anybody know what happened in 08? Besides me being gone? Something happened in the country. The, the market because of what? The, the mortgage. The mortgage crisis. I lost 40% of my business. Thank you. 40% of my business in one year while I was gone. The only thing that saved me was my income coming from the military. The rest of it went to continue paying staff and keeping the office open. So I do, anyway, that's just kind of the, the, the type of stuff that will be coming to you. Guys, we all get a name tag and a tent card? Thank you. All right, so taking, taking, uh, uh, taking your business to the next level, guys. That's what we're gonna be doing here with Medicare. If you're doing it, great. Okay, there's my, I'm so excited. Come on, where's my dancer? You ready? Oh. Okay, okay, there you go, there you go, all right. Yeah, I've always had at least two backup dancers, but you know, not anymore. Okay. You're way beyond me on that, man. We, me and the tech guy already did that. At least we got it on one screen, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so a little bit about me again. I, I told you, there's, here's one thing I want you guys to do. Take that number down, okay? That is my personal cell number. 
I'm gonna tell you guys, I have about five friends. That's it. That's all I got room for. How many of those are real friends? Uh, well, yes, how many of those are real? Okay, I, they're, they're real to me, okay? Five buddies and that's it. Everybody else is, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to get in my circle, but that number is there for you guys for one reason, okay? You know, this business, it's a business. I am there to unstuck you when you're stuck. I do have my own vocabulary, okay? So you gotta roll with that. So I'm the guy that's gonna unstuck you when you're stuck. Most of the conversations I have from agents are one minute long. And I tell agents, don't call me, don't be, hey, how are you doing? No, no, let's just get straight to business. Luis, I'm with a customer, I'm with a customer, and this is what's going on, can you help me? And I'm like, yes, I'll, I can help you. The other thing, when you call me, let me know if I'm on speaker. All right, Chad back there was one time I was like, dude, what the hell's going on? La, la, la. Like, Luis, you're on speaker. And I'm like, you know, give, give me a little heads up. Um, you know, so uh, not a good thing if I'm on speaker, but I don't have a problem being on speaker with a customer so that they can hear what my answer is going to be. So let me know. That is my email. There's the family and my dog who just passed away. 17-year-old uh, Chihuahua. Yep, yep, he, he, he hung in there. Um, it, it's, it's crazy when you can see how, uh, I, I think when I get that old, in, in, in real years, at least I know my kids, they were holding my little dog when he was going to the restroom. He couldn't, you know, he'd fall over when he tried to pee and it was so nice to see how the kids could take care of a dog. Anyway, so there's the family, uh, good, happy family. I love it. Um, I started back in 1999, guys. I started as a captive agent with Mutual of Omaha. I walk into the Mutual Omaha office and the guy was like, there's, there's about 10 guys in the bullpen and they're dialing for dollars. They're, they're, they're doing the boiler room thing. And uh, manager comes in and is like, you wanna go sit with those guys or do you want your own private office? And I'm like, well, well shoot, I want my own private office. I don't wanna be with those dudes. And uh, so I get my own private office, I'm like what, what's, what's my job? He goes, you're gonna sell Medicare supplements. None of those guys wanna do that. I'm like, okay, I don't know what that is, but let's, let's rock and roll. You know, what do I do? It's like, here, we got so many leads, we have no idea why these guys do not want to call. All they want to do is life insurance. So I got my start with Mutual selling Medicare supplements and long-term care way back in the day. Um, so that's, that's kind of my background, 20 plus years. I know what you're thinking. You're like, you don't, you don't even look like you could be in this business for 20 years, right? Yeah, 20, 20, 23 years now in this business, guys. Um, there's my agency, guys. It's a machine. I have a PNC agency. I don't do a damn thing, and we're number one, almost number one in Texas with the PNC agency. We're definitely number one in San Antonio, okay? Uh, but I have a well-oiled well -oiled machine. It took a lot of years to get there. Um, I have, I do all the Medicare for myself. And during the ACA season, which is the end of the year, I take two of those people to help me because we've got almost 3,000 ACA customers, over 1,000 Medicare customers, and over 5,000 PNC customers. I mean, it is huge. Um, but I love it. There's nothing else I could, I, I, you know, we got one military guy back there. I'd have to be a general, five star general to make what I make now with my little agency. It, it is crazy. Uh, I used to be a teacher too. I taught for a little while. I don't even think, I couldn't, uh, a superintendent would be maybe a quarter of what I make uh, being a superintendent for a school district. So I love the insurance business. Um, all right, God, I wish, I, now I do need a backup. Come on, let's check this out, check this out, hold on. Let's see if I can get some good sound. All right, do me a favor guys, I need everybody to get up, come on. Hey, I wanna dance with somebody. I know, you're like, you, come on. All right, you gotta follow this, all right? Everybody's gotta do, David, you recording? This is great blackmail. All right, you all ready? Come on, do the moves, guys. Follow up, Dave, blackmail everybody. All right, come on, come on, guys. You all gotta do it. I, I was thinking about wearing shorts like that. I think one day the, the, the pro, David, are you recording everybody? Come on, dude, we need blackmail. That guy can dance, look at that guy. There, there you go. All right, all right, enough of this crap. But don't sit down, don't sit down. There, there's a method to this. Don't sit down. Hold on. Hi. 
Hold on. Okay, this is what I want. This is why I do this. And you're like, God, what did I just sign up for? Okay, Medicare's boring. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. If you are making, okay, agents have big eagles. Oh, you know, hey, I'm good. Okay, if you're making more than $100,000 a year, stay standing and the rest of y'all sit down. 100K. Oh, come on. Okay, we got a handful. We got a handful of agents. Okay, now this is, check this out. How many of y'all make 100,000 in renewals without having to work? You want to retire, you, you can stay at home all day long. One, two, three, four. What do you do? You have an oil well? Medicare. Medicare, what do you do? PNC. PNC, okay, you're, you're in my ballpark. Luis? Medicare and ACA. Medicare, ACA, Chad? Medicare. Medicare. I'm not, Matt, you can sit down, Matt. <laughs> Matt makes about 10,000 10, a year, maybe. Okay, Medicare, guys. The beauty of Medicare, you're sitting there thinking, hey, you know, you, 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 you can do final expense, nothing wrong with that, but it's a freaking hamster wheel. What happens when you don't sell final expense? No money keeps coming, you know, the renewals suck. Okay, the beauty of Medicare is the renewals. All right, so, all right, I like this guy. Okay, so, well, I already did that one, sorry, okay. This is where we're at right now. Whoa, a little loud there. Okay, take, let's look at the Medicare money because a lot of y'all don't know about the money in Medicare. If you sell somebody new to Medicare, you make $573. Okay, they're aging into Medicare. You're like, okay, that's not bad. Yeah, we need to update that. Uh, well, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Don't steal us thunder. Okay, yeah, exactly. Man, I, I got a little bit of thunder and you steal it, Matt. Thank you. All right, so. We're getting a raise, okay? When we get into the annual enrollment at the end of this year, that 573 is going to what? 601. 601, all right? And that's, that's the low end of it. If you live in, a, in some of these other states, Connecticut, um, Jersey, Connecticut where else? New Jersey, New Jersey, California, the, the, Pennsylvania. They're in the 700s, I think, okay? So, guys, you go write one Medicare you're gonna make $573 right now. And they're like, okay, all right, that's FE money. Now what? After you write that, you're gonna receive half of that, $287 in renewals. So if you start doing some math, well, we also got a raise on our renewals. What did the, what did the renewal go up to? 350 cents. No, 301, 301, went up to $301, guys. So start doing some math. If you got 100 policies, what do you make in a year? A month. The what? 36,000 a year. Let's see if I can do my math right. 30,000, yeah. right? 2,500 a month, right? Yeah. In next year. The, the next year, okay? But you start doing your math. 30K, you get 100 policies. What if you have 200? You know, so you need 400 policies to make six figures in renewals. All right, Chad, check this out. How many do you got in eight months? Uh, 700. 700 in eight, in, in less than a year, guys. Crazy numbers, wow. crazy. So can you start making six figures in renewals? Anybody, most people can make it in new business. It's not that hard. But to make it in renewals, that's crazy, guys. So 400 policies. I think it's now 300 and something policies. 330. What was the math that we did, Matt? Do you remember? Yeah, I think it was like 3, 330. 330. 330 policies to get into six-figure renewals. And here's the beauty. These renewals are lifetime. They don't go away. Right? They do go away. Okay, you, you know, when you, there are several ways where you lose your renewals, and it's going to happen. What happens to seniors eventually? Okay, yes, you're like, don't die, God, come on, stay on the books. Why do you have to go? Yeah, I know. It's, man, okay, so you, you know, you don't want to die. I mean, of course they don't want to, but yes, yeah, so they die. You can't help that. Some of them are going to relocate. Some of them are going to get talked to by other agents and flip to different plans. You're gonna lose a good percentage of your book. 
On average, I tell an agent, you're going to lose 20%. Some agents are a little better, some are a little worse, but that's a good level of attrition. So if you've got 400 policies, you're going to lose 80 that year. Well, you've got to write 80 just to keep it going. It's not bad. It's pretty easy, I think. Some guys are doing 40 or 50 in a month. So in two months, you can make up for what you've lost. All right, so we talked about the new money. Okay, check this out. What if they are not new to Medicare? What if they already have a plan, you talk to them and you flip them over to a better plan? Well, you get half. You're in the renewal stage of this. You can only get new to Medicare one time. Okay, and that's it. You'll never get new to Medicare. Every time if you flip them to a different plan, you're get, we call that a rollover, a, a flip, um, you're gonna get half of it. Now, you don't get the entire half. It's prorated. So if you flip them in the middle of the year, you're gonna get half of the half. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you're not gonna get that half of a half, which is a quarter, all up at once. They're gonna break it into, into monthly payments. They call that as earned which is beautiful. I love as earned money. You know what as, as earned money is? It's real money. You can spend it. Okay. What, what happens with advanced commissions? If you spend it, you are praying, you got your fingers crossed. Please don't cancel. Please don't cancel. Okay. With Medicare, when you get that check, it's yours. You can go spend it real money. All right. So, oh, there it is. Okay. There, there is the actual money, depending on where you're selling guys. Look at this. 573, that's going up to $601, okay? Uh, renewals, 287, going up to 301. Look at the other states, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, DC, uh, California, the weirdos, those guys. Man, I hate California. I, who, who's, anybody here from California? You can't sell hips, man, it's, there's, you got a whole set of different rules over there. Um, but you can't sell short-term plans over there. Uh, there's a, it's just a whole other, but look at that. You get 715 bucks for a sale. Not bad. All right. Okay. I've, I'm sure that's going to go up. Uh, I don't know what it is next year. Now, what about prescription drug plans? Okay. So sometimes a Medicare Advantage plan is not the answer. Sometimes you're going to sell a prescription plan. Well, you get money for that too. Okay. I don't know what it's going up to. Do you know what it's going up to? I have to check online. All right. There we go. All right, and check this out. Did you guys know that you can pay referral fees to Medicare for, for, for people uh, referring you Medicare? And they don't have to have a license and you can legally do it? Yeah, you're giving me that look like, what is growing from, the, from your head? All right, guys, you can pay a $100 referral fee. Okay, what does that mean? You create a referral network, okay? I think the best referral network is going to talk to a PNC guy. Very few PNC guys get out of their lane and they all have good sized books of business. If you go talk to that PNC guy and you tell them, look, send me a Medicare, they're gonna go somewhere, I'll take care of them and I'll give you a hundred bucks. You can do it legally. Not behind the door, not under the table. How much? $92 for a prescription drug plan. So a little bit of a raise, but you can give, you can give, uh, thank you. You can give a hundred dollar referral fee. I don't know if that's going up next year or not, but you know, that's a good way to bring in some business. Questions, any questions, anything, something, anybody, one question, just one. I'm not going to go until I get one question. So is MedSup an advanced state commission? No, Medicare supplement is a com percentage of the premium. Good question. Okay. Carry by carrier. Yes, carrier and uh, yeah, just I think it's just carrier. But the different Medicare supplement plans, I think they all pay the same commissions, same percentage of commission. We we vary. It does vary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's check this out. All right, so we got three people, guys. So we're we're still talking about money. So we got three people. We got John, Susie, and Paul. So think about what kind of agent you can be. So John writes two a week. Is he gonna make any money? Two policies a week. And then we have Susie who does one every single day and she takes Saturday and Sunday off. And then we got Paul who does two a day. <coughs> he works six days a week. He takes Sundays off and that's it. Let's look at their money. All right, so 
This is my math here that I've come up with. This guy that does two a week, is he ever really going to make some money down the road? And two a week, guys, that's a lazy agent. That's a very slow agent. 43,000 is what I calculated. Now, nobody is lucky enough to write uh, all new to Medicare. Nobody's that good. There is no turning 65 list out there. Okay, it's impossible to get. Okay, I've fallen for that carrot so many times. That little list of turning 65, it is magical. But I do have one that I'm gonna offer you at the end. When I get to my second part of what I do, I have my own magical turning 65 list that is real. I just told you there wasn't one, but I'm telling you I got one. Okay, all right, so this guy, he writes one new to Medicare and he flips one. That's, his, that's the way he rolls. He makes 43K in one year. Okay. The second year, look what he makes. You would think, well, what, what happened to your math here? Well, I took into account that he lost 20% of his book that year. So that's not bad. Second year, he's making 81,000, assuming he's keeping the same rhythm. That's pretty decent money for two years. Go try to find a job and make 81K, selling two policies a week. That's, that's some pretty decent money there, guys. All right, let's look at the Susie here. She's doing pretty good. She's looking damn hot right now. Okay, she's making 100K doing one a day. Okay, what do you think she's making on renewals in year two? 200. 204K. That's not bad. 200,000. I've taken into account some, some retention issues, but she does, she likes her pace. She likes to write only one a day. And then we've got this guy. Man, this guy's a go-getter. All right. Some of you single ladies are like, yes, I want to marry a John. What's his name, John? Yeah, I want to find a guy like this. 229K the first year. Look what he's bringing in the second year. 400,000. And all he's doing is 12 a week. That's 40-something, 40 48 policies a month. We've got guys that do 50 a month. It's, it's not unheard of. Normal dudes and ladies that can knock out 50 a month. Very, very doable. So the question is, is there money in Medicare? There's some serious money in Medicare. And this is slow money, guys. This is not fast money. This is not, this is not upfront money. This is every single month you're getting this money. When it trickles or when, when you lose business, it's not like FE where you lose big chunks of change. You lose one, it goes down by a little bit. It's not that bad. But there's some real money in, in Medicare. Another question. I need one more question. Come on. You can't ask me again. You're done. But you can if you want to. <laughs> you give somebody a chance. Okay. Well, one question. Anybody, somebody's got to have a question about money. I have a question. Hit me. Okay. So um, what would be the acquisition cost that you would assume as far as leads and everything to get one client on average? Yep. You've got to spend money to make money. You gotta find so leads, leads, leads. Uh, who wants? Uh, I'm not even gonna talk about leads, okay? Because that's that is really, um, David. Good question here, man. Help me out here. Yeah. Acquisition cost. Average. Average. What do you think? Well, you, you gotta take into account um, our lead think, subsidy program. Yeah, and I think three leads. Three Come on, man. Get a mic. Here we go, Ted. Leads okay, here. Lead to about one seven. I'd say test, 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 four. test, yeah. test, test. Right. I, I could, I, I, I'm okay with that. All right, hit it, man. So, so yeah, you know, what, 125 to 150, but then there's the subsidies then from, from us, then there's the carrier subsidies potentially as well. I mean, we have agents that are getting paid from the carriers to offset their expenses. It's incredible. Yeah. Don't go at it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. Three, three to four leads, we'll call it. Okay, so more or more less. Direct mail. Yeah, because direct mail is the highest quality. Is this working? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it is, in my opinion, the highest quality. And we've been doing this for many years. Yeah. I've been in it 16 years. Uh, yeah, there's lots of Facebook leads out there, but direct mail is the highest quality. So what is the cost of a, a direct mail? Uh, a direct mail, it depends on your area, too. You know, uh, if you're ordering for the thousand, it, you know, if you're in Dallas, Texas, it's going to be more expensive than if you're in Michigan somewhere. 
Um, so it varies, you know. But on average, let's just call it maybe anywhere. It could be anywhere from 25 to, and it depends on the time of the, time of the year too. Right. During AEP, when everybody is coming out from under the rock and starting to mail too, it's right. going to be more expensive. Okay. Right. But call it 20 during the, the entire year. Uh, we sell it year round. Uh, call it 25 to 45 dollars a lead. You know. In some areas it could be more expensive, and in AEP it could be extremely expensive. So I've been buying quite a bit of leads lately. So at some point today, you're probably going to hear about a company called Needle Lead. Needle Lead has been used by a lot of agents. They're very reliable. Um, they're quick to get the direct mail turnaround. You're looking at about $32 to $34 per direct mail lead. Facebook leads are generally going to cost about $15 per lead. Now, in the last few months, I've used a lot more Facebook leads. Facebook leads are good for filler in, so if you want to kind of cut the budget on direct mail leads, I think Facebook leads are worth it. There are a lot of people in the industry that think Facebook leads don't work. Well, how good are you when you go into the home and you're presenting? If you know what you're doing and you know what you're saying, then if a Facebook lead can get you into the door, they're gonna work, right? And you have Facebook leads that you go and knock. So I love Facebook leads, and in the last, um, you know, several months, I've, I, I think I've sold about 300 from Facebook leads. So, um, direct mail leads are number one. Facebook leads definitely get some to fill in. One last thing, older leads are out there. Grab some older leads, go work them. A lot of seniors cannot remember what lead they filled out or when, and they're completely confused. And you go and you talk with them, and they won't know if you're an older lead, newer lead, or what. You're just there to help them out. And one last thing on leads, uh, thank you, Chad. Uh, uh, the longevity, the shelf life of a direct mail is always going to be the longest of all, uh, in my experience. Um, Facebook leads, you got to jump on them quick. You know, because you can show the direct mail lead. You can it's got their handwriting on it. And, you know, that's, that's the longevity. So it, it varies. Okay. I have, I have no Medicare lead cost because I use my magical turning 65 list that I have. Magical. I'm the only one in the whole world that has it. Okay, I got my own list, okay? And I'm gonna show you guys how to create your own list later. But so I have my magical turning 65 list and I have my PNC agency that I feed off. So my people are aging in and they're just they're coming right now. I hear you do Medicare. I'm like, yeah, come on in, sit down. Let's go, let's rock and roll. They're virgin, they're new to Medicare. Oh, they're so easy to write. God, they're, I love them. All right, so why do Medicare, guys? Yes, Chad. One more thing on, on the leads. You guys, if you work leads, leads are definitely going to have a little bit higher drop-off rate. We were talking about retention. If those of you want to go work conventions, conferences, churches, public events, you're going to get more word of mouth, you're probably going to have a higher uh, retention rate. You're going to have a lower drop-off rate. So keep that in mind. If you're working pure leads and you're going individual to individual, um, you might be able to write more more quickly, but the drop-off rate might be a little bit more. They're a little more stickier when, when they're organically created. Okay, so guys, in the U.S., why do Medicare? Okay, in the U.S., and then check this out. How many people do you all think are turning 65 a day? I've heard all kinds of numbers, and I got the number. 10,000. 10K. All right, I heard 10K. I, the latest number is 13, and I still haven't updated because I'm going to show 10 in here. Let's see, where are we doing? There we go, 10,000. But the last number that I heard, we're in the, in the beginning of this boom, and it's going to last for about 10 years of people turning 65, okay? And check out what the, what's going on with these seniors, okay? All right, so... Now that you guys know how many seniors are aging in, I'm gonna tell you where seniors are coming from. All right, so seniors are coming from one of these three places. Okay, number one, they have group coverage at their employer. Okay, the, the few, not many. You'll have some that have an individual policy. They may have an Obamacare policy. They may have a short-term policy. They may have a Christian ministry type of policy. They may have a crappy limited benefit policy. And then you've got the other senior that has no insurance. Okay, that's where seniors are coming from. It's one of those three places. There's not a fourth. All right, 
So the senior with group coverage, okay? This is, the, you, you try to put yourself in their shoes. So here's the senior with group coverage. Number one, when you work for a company, they tell you this, these are your options. You don't get to decide, okay? They, they have a plan, there's not a lot of choices. Okay, the choice really is, do I want it or do I not? How much is it gonna cost me? And how much more is it gonna cost me to put my spouse and my kids? That's it. They make their decisions based on that. All right, so that's, that's the employer. Now we get to the seniors with an individual policy. These guys have Obamacare, okay? These guys, again, the, the short-term plans, which are okay, no pre-existing conditions are covered. Um, the Christian plans are limited benefit plans. Then you got this guy who is very, very common. These guys have no insurance. And guess what they're doing? They're just waiting and waiting and waiting to get to Medicare, okay? And then what are we gonna do when we get them? We're gonna ruin their day. You'll see here in my presentation. When you go in there and you go meet the senior with no insurance and they're like, God, I'm finally gonna get Medicare, it's so good. We're gonna go in there and ruin their day because we're gonna tell them how crappy Medicare is and why they need us, all right? I know you're like, God, this, this is not good. All right, so these seniors, there's, there's, okay, we're gonna do the dance one more time. Okay, these seniors, okay, here's what's going through their mind. It's extremely stressful when they turn 65. What do you think is happening to them when they turn 65? They start getting mail and phone calls about seven months. All day long. What else is happening? They're retired, so they're at home. What, what are they watching? Gunsmoke. Joe Namath. Joe Namath. Uh, dynamite guy. What's, a, what's dynamite? Uh, they're with JJ. They're watching all these guys telling them about all these plans, all these benefits. They're, they're, they're getting confused. Okay, the mail. I've gone into some of these houses and they've got a pile of mail a foot high. Every carrier's calling them or mailing to them. Guess what? There's, we have rules, right? We have, we have uh, guidelines that we have to follow, but they, they, they get broken all the time. These guys get door knocked, they get unsolicited phone calls. I mean, it is crazy when they're turning 65. <clears throat> all right, so number one, check this out. Okay, this is, this is one of the reasons I see seniors. Number one, you hit it perfectly. Okay, they're getting mail from every carrier. Okay, they're receiving the un unsolicited phone calls, they're watching TV, they're seeing Joe Namath <coughs> uh, touting, hey, you, you get all the benefits that you're entitled to. <clears throat> Number two, the freaking alphabet. You think, you, I mean, some of you guys don't even know this and you're agents, you're professional agents. Do you know A, B, C, D? How about N, G, F? It's a, it, the freaking alphabet is crazy. The Medicare alphabet, they have no idea what's going on, okay? So that's, that's something else that these seniors are having to deal with. The, the, the Medicare alphabet, it is very, very stressful. What do you think the third one is? The third level of stress that seniors are going to when they're turning 65. Anybody want to guess? I'll, I'll remember all the unsolicited calls and mail, okay, the freaking Medicare alphabet, and there's one more. When the court says okay, that, that, that is, hey, when do they start drawing? They don't want to draw too early or too late, but anybody? I have, a, I have a prize. I have a prize. The what again? No, no, you're, no, no. I hate saying no to people when they, say, they give a, an answer. All right, here we go. All right, who do they go with? Isn't your plan the best plan? Yeah. Isn't your plan the best plan? Yeah. And, and that, you know, who, who's, who's, who do I sign up with? United, Aetna, Humana, Cigna, Anthem, America. Yeah. I mean, who do I go with? Pick one, I'll sign you up for any of them. Well, you know, they start freaking out. You know, they, they don't know what, what they're afraid of is choosing the wrong plan. So what do they do? Yeah. Nothing, they're afraid. I don't, want to make, I don't want to make a wrong decision. On top of that, do, the, do, you, do you think that they're wondering, well, is my doctor in that plan? Are my medications covered in that plan? Okay, so they're turning 65 and they have to deal with all this crap. 
So now you know why we're in such demand. If you're thinking this thing is oversaturated, too many agents, not even close, guys. That's why these seniors are in such demand, or, or us agents are in such demand. Um, Medicare.gov, I don't know if they've, they, I know they changed the site, but when I used to do a plan search, the first plan that would pop up in my area was this carrier, and you would think that the first plan would be the better plan. But the first plan on Medicare.gov, when I would put the zip code and do a search, was an MA only plan with no prescription drugs. I barely caught it. You think a senior can catch that on their own? They're like, oh, this, is, this must be the best one because it's the first one on the list, so I'm gonna sign up. They sign up for that first plan and it doesn't have prescription drugs built into it. Now what? Even Medicare.gov, the government agency that helps seniors, the very first plan is the crappiest MA only type of plan. All right, so with that being said, guys, now you know the money. Now you know why we're in such demand. We are at the beginning of a boom. This is a great time to get into Medicare. So what I did over the years is I created, and this is my prize, but I created, I couldn't think of a better name, but I created a smart book, okay? So I'm gonna give two away. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm the, the better dancer, uh, we're, we're gonna do a little contest. But I created a smart book, okay? It's, it's my creation. The reason I created it, um, is anybody a pilot? No pilots? Okay, you, you're a pilot? Okay, saw your hand go up. All right, I used to fly little airplanes. And uh, every pilot, if you, you know, when we flew here, if you look in the cockpit, what does a pilot have that he's doing before he's taking off? Checklist. A checklist. Those guys are super smart. Okay, they got their shit together. That's why they're pilots. Okay, and they're going through a checklist. Every time they take off, they're gonna do their pre-flight. They're checking off different things. Well, that's what this is. This is your checklist. Okay, so I created it because I can't remember a bunch of stuff. So here's what I did. All right, so this is my presentation, guys. Some of you are thinking, how, if, assuming you buy leads, assuming you get in front of a senior, this is what happens, okay? So I walk into the senior's house, I knock on their door, or they're in my office, they're new to Medicare, or even if they have a plan. This is, this is how I do the presentation. This is how we train the agents to do presentations. Because I will tell you, when I got trained, this is, what, this, is, this is how they train me. Walk in with an enrollment kit, one kit, one company, that's it. We sat down, this is the plan, let's go. Not literally that cold, but I offered one plan. I didn't even know if it was gonna be the right plan, but I walked in, I was trained to just offer one plan. Okay, I walked out, my, my retention was awful, okay? Because uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't educate. So part of my smart book, this is what you get. So this is, I'm with a senior and this is what we're gonna do. Mr. Senior, here's what we're gonna do today, okay? We're gonna talk about Medicare Advantage plans. We're gonna talk about prescription drug plans. We're gonna talk about Medicare supplements. We're gonna talk about indemnity plans, cancer, heart and stroke plans, dental and vision, and if you want to, we can talk about life insurance. I can't sell you life insurance right now, but we can talk about that. Is that okay with you? Sales, you, you, you want to get them yes in that buying mode. All right. <clears throat> what we're also going to do today, Mr. Senior, we're going to talk about the four parts of Medicare. Remember, I told you the alphabet's freaking them out. We're going to talk about part A. We're going to talk about part B. We're going to talk about part C. And we're going to talk about part D. Is that okay with you? Okay. We're gonna talk about what part A covers and we're gonna talk about what part B covers. They have no idea. Most of y'all don't need, probably don't even know what A and B cover. I have to refer to this because I forget. But we're gonna talk more importantly about, wh about what it doesn't cover. <clears throat> we're gonna talk about your out-of-pocket cost. I know you've been waiting all your life to get Medicare, but man, there's a lot of out-of-pocket cost. We're gonna talk about how Part C, Part D, and Medicare supplements are gonna fill in these gaps that Medicare has. Medicare has a lot of holes in it. Okay, we're gonna talk about how we're gonna manage this risk for you. Is that okay with you, Mr. Senior? 
Okay, I'm getting that buying. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So that's in the smart book. Then we talk about Medicare. Um, I'm not going to do this for the sake of time because I never have enough time, but I'm going to start. I ask them, let me see your Medicare card. Okay, I get their Medicare card. Some people will tell you, well, what do you need it for? Well, I'm not going to do my one hour presentation when they don't have A, or A and B. If I see that they're missing a portion, I'm like, I can't help you. I can kind of help them, but not really. Okay, so I get their Medicare card and I'll tell them, hey, with this card, this is what you can do. You can go to any doctor, any facility, any provider that accepts Medicare assignment. This is really, really good. We'll talk about eligibility. What if I get them before they're turning 65? I, in my office, when somebody brings me somebody who is, I tell them to bring them to me six months before they turn 65. In my office, when they do that, they get $100. One of my staff. It's a, it's a bonus. Okay, hey, you bring me somebody that's 64 and a half, I'm going to give you 100 bucks. So I'll talk to them about en enrolling in Medicare. I'll talk to them about when they need to enroll in Medicare. And these are changing, guys. This crap right here, uh, this, uh, the, the three months before, the month of that they turn 65, and the three months after, that is changing next year. Does anybody know what it's changing to? Here's what's happening. You get somebody who turns 65 here. When they enroll here, they're going to begin the next month. When they enroll a month after, look at that. It doesn't start for three months, then five months, then six months. So literally, they enroll three months after they turn 65 because they missed it, and they've got a big gap in coverage. Stupid. I don't know why. Well, all that's going away next year. It's some, the, the Bennis Act or something like that is going to fix that. But I'll talk to my seniors about that. Now, some agents like to help seniors enroll. I got too many irons in the fire. I will tell them, no, 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 I'm not going to help you with your Social Security and your enrollment. What you're going to do is you're going to go to Social Security because they're, they're open now. They, they, everything was by phone during COVID. Social Security offices are open again. So I tell them, you're going to go to the Social Security office and you're going to enroll in Part A and Part B. When you get it, you come see me. All right. Sometimes... For the seniors that I know aren't going to do that, I will go and do it for them. The last time I did it, it took me two hours to do a, an enrollment. I, I, it just, it was, it's two hours I don't have in a day. So I put a little guide here for y'all in the smart book that, sh that will guide you on how to enroll somebody into Medicare. Then we're, we're going we're gonna to get into this. All right. So Mr. Senior, part A, did you know that Part A covers inpatient hospital. Part A will cover skilled nursing. Part A will cover your home health care. And Part A will cover hospice. Okay? Part B, here's what Part B is going to do. It's going to cover your services from the doctor. Okay? The nurses. It's going to cover mental health, preventative care, your, your medical equipment, the wheelchair, the, the walker that you may need. It's going to cover outpatient care. And it's going to cover the ambulance. That's what part A and part B does. Now I'll get into some more specifics. I'm not gonna get into this, there's a lot of info, but I'm getting into, with this, with this senior, I'm presenting all this. So out of curiosity, guys, what do you think I'm doing when I'm with a senior and I'm doing all this? I'm doing what again? Educating I'm educating them. I'm not, even, I'm not even a sales guy anymore. I'm selling, but I am not the sales guy at this point. I'm educating them, they have no idea. The other thing that I'm doing is I know that if an agent comes behind me, 99% of the time they're not gonna do this. I'm setting myself completely apart from the average agent. Okay, so I'll go over with the premium, I'll go over the deductible, okay, I'll go over the co-insurances that they have to pay. Did you guys know that there was a deductible for Part A? $1,500 deductible. How many of you all think that that's an annual deductible? Did you, did you guys know that? They've been waiting all their life for Medicare and they have a freaking $1,500 deductible. What is it, 15, what, 15, 56. You can have six of these in one year. How many seniors do you know that had 1,500 bucks in their bank account? The average senior never prepared for retirement. They have no money. 
they're living just on that little measly social security check. Maybe they have a job and they, they may, they're the greeter at Walmart or whatever, they have to work because they can't make ends meet. So you think they have $1,500 sitting in their bank account? The, the nine out of my 10 seniors do not. Okay, so think about that. Six deductibles in one year. Remember, this is somebody who's been waiting for Medicare all their life and what am I doing? I'm, I mean, they're like, why, why did I even let you in my house? You're, you're ruining my day. Okay, we're really ruining their day. Okay, part B, check it out, part B. Okay, you got a premium you got to pay, I'm sorry. Does everybody pay a premium for part B? Except for people that are on Medicaid. Okay, but everybody else has to pay 170. Are there people that pay more than 170? Yes, yes. depending on your income, there's freaking Irma, Irma. I-R-M-M-A, I think, or I-R-R, whatever it is, it's called Irma. Yes, depending on your income, you could pay more than the 170. You have another deductible. You have to pay this deductible six times a year too. Ah, man, okay, I only got one person, it's annual. I was just checking on you, I'm making sure I paid attention. Annual, I have a one time a year, $233 deductible, that's it, okay? Is everything covered after that deductible? Not exactly. Not exactly. 80% 80 80 is covered. The insured is on the hook for 20%. A buddy of mine just had open heart, 400K. 20% would have been $80,000. Okay, there's some serious financial risk to people. Now, one of the things that, we, that us agents, when we're talking, is when you call me, like Luis, I'm sitting with a senior and he's naked. Okay, or oh, I'll ask you, are they naked? What does that mean? Okay. Naked just means they have A and B. Okay, that's kind of the little, you know, you don't want to run naked. We don't want to see you. Maybe when you were 40, but <laughs> not at 65. Hell no, I don't want to see you. You know, uh, it's something you don't want to see. So yeah, so, Mr. Senior, you don't want to run naked. You do not want to run with A and B. Hell no. All right. All right. Oh, what? Dang it. Okay, what else does Medicare not cover? One at a time, don't, don't, you, okay, come on, man. Oh. Uh, cancer. Explain yourself. Cancer drugs. Okay, okay, yes, so drugs, we'll go with drugs. So drugs are not covered by Medicare. Horrible. Horrible. You, you've been on Medicare, you, you're, you're, you, you waited all your life to get Medicare, you paid in all your working life and Medicare doesn't cover prescription drugs. Sucks. What else? Dental. What? Dental. No dental. These, a lot of these seniors need dentures. They need help with their teeth, so there's no dental. What else? Vision. No vision. Really? There's no annual services. There's a, uh, a, uh, a one-time welcome. welcome, but there's no annual. Okay, what else are we missing? Think of that Joe Namath commercial. What is he promising these seniors? No, no potential give back, no money back. What else? There's a lot of things that Medicare doesn't cover, guys. Hearing aids. No hearing aids. Okay, yes. What about the gym no gym memberships? You know, oh, you want that free gym membership. No transportation. What are they got? They, they can't get to the doctor. Okay, I'm missing a couple of more things. Come on. Over no over the counter. Move. These guys love their over the counter. Okay. No limit on your financial risk. No maximum out of pocket. Okay, it's 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 high as it as you know, whatever your bill is. Is there anything else that Medicare doesn't cover? Lots of stuff. Man, it's awful. All right, so there's my list. Medicare. Okay, hold on. Let's see if y'all can hear this. And I do this with my seniors. Okay, I, I use I present from my computer or my laptop, and I'll tell them, look, your Medicare doesn't cover your drugs. No dental, no vision, no hearing, no preventative, no over-the-counter, no gym membership. It sucks. And there's no limit. There's your MOOP. No limit on your out-of-pocket costs. However, there are two ways to fill these gaps in. So don't worry. All right? 
I mean, I, I kind of, you know, I do this with my seniors. Medicare's a little boring. I mean, oh, you know, it is. But literally, I, I try to get my seniors a little, don't worry, I got you covered. That's why I'm here. Yes, I just ruined your day. You've been waiting all your life for Medicare. But guess what? Now I can take care of you. So don't worry. We're good. What do you think is, after, what do you think is next after this slide? It starts with two M's. It is the MM. Anybody know? Moneymaker. The money maker, baby. Yes. The money maker. Okay, this is where you guys are going to make your money. And you should not care which way they go. Okay, we are neutral. You have some, all these people on social media that says one way is the best and the other way sucks or vice versa. With us, we don't care. We're going in there and we're letting the seniors tell us what they want. How would you feel if you walked into a doctor and he looks at you like, all right, here's what I'm going to give you. And you're like, what, you ask me how I'm doing. Ask me what's wrong with me. How are you going to prescribe something to me without knowing what's wrong with me? You're doing the very same thing here. So this is my money maker, guys. So I will tell the senior, I'll take their card and I will put the card right up there. This is what you have, Mr. Senior. And you have two options. Option number one is um, you, we can get you a Medicare supplement and we can pair it with a prescription drug plan. On average, it's gonna cost you an additional $135 a month on top of the 170 they're already paid. Okay, so we're gonna go across the room here. Everybody has to give, well, there's not enough answers to this, but with a Medicare supplement, what are the pros, the positives of a supplement? No network. You can go anywhere you want. What else? Have the benefits of transportation or the gym memberships. They fill in with other things um, and like medical supplies as well. Okay. All right. So with the supplement, there's usually not a lot of benefits, but everything is covered with a supplement. Okay. With a supplement, everything is covered. Depending on the supplement, the most that probably that they'll have to pay is a Part B deductible. The what again? Uh, travel, yes. You can get travel benefits. Okay, very easy. There's no referrals. No pre-authorizations. Okay, there's a lot of good stuff with a supplement. Okay, what do you think the bad, the bad thing is with a supplement? What's the negative, the con? That's it. There's only one negative, it's cost. Besides cost, there is one more thing. There what? Okay, there's no extra benefits, guys. They're not gonna get the gym membership. They're not gonna get the over-the-counter. They're not gonna get the hearing, the dental, the vision. What else? Anthem has silver sneakers embedded on our Oh, what do you got? What do you got? Okay. <laughs> so, they, so, yes, some of them will embed, so you got a gym membership, but no dental, right? No vision, no hearing, no over-the-counter, no. Why have to buy a drug plan separately? Why? Oh, yes, and they have to buy a drug plan. It's not built in. So, yes, thank you. Yes, they have to buy a, a drug plan. It's not built in, okay? Um, but the biggest negative is premium. That's the biggest negative. When somebody's making $1,200 and you want to go take 10% of their money for this, it's not going to happen, guys. You know, for us, you, you know, we're, we're, we're planning for retirement. You're like, ah, it's 135 bucks. Yeah, but talk to somebody who has no money in the bank and a $1,200 check. And they gotta live off that, pay rent, pay their bills, it's not gonna happen, guys. No matter what, it's just not gonna happen. So the biggest negative is gonna be premium and, there's, and, and, and the lack of all the extra benefits, but there's one more thing. I'll, I'll give me one minute, Chad. Okay, hold on, the what? The rates go up every year. Okay, there's, there's annual increases based on age, but also the co if the company has a bad year, they could raise rates across the board for everybody. So there's age bands, there's annual increases overall for everybody. And can you get into a MedSup whenever you want? Nope. Is there an annual enrollment for MedSup? Nope. It's, it, there is not, guys. There's only one time when they can get a MedSup with no health questions and that's when they turn 65. 
or if they're working and they have credible coverage and they get it later, they get that guaranteed issue. Other than that, they have to go through underwriting. Okay. Did I steal your thunder? No. Who raised you? You were going to say something? Okay. Yes, sir. I come from the medical billing background, and one of the, the things that I've dealt with over the years is that's one of the most difficult claims to get paid because the registration people will take the Medicare supplement as primary insurance, register the patient, and really Medicare's primary supplement is secondary, and the Medicare beneficiaries end up getting bills and you get involved with their family, you know, calling about, hey, I got a bill, she's got Medicare, he's got Medicare, and because they don't know, um, and then you compare that to Medicare Advantage, there's only one, you know, one, one entity you file to. And that's it, because it, it, it just, you're right, yeah. very true. Thank you. Chad, you had something you want to share? I didn't want you to forget talk about the annual increase, but it was brought up. Okay. I think one other thing could be mentioned about a supplement though, when you're in a home, you're dealing with people with supplements, a lot of times kind of like people have TRS or, you know, a plan where there's a monthly premium, they're, they're kind of scared of moving away from a supplement. They're scared of moving away from TRS, but it's actually, it can be quite rewarding, you know, showing the advantage of a Medicare Advantage plan in contrast to the supplement on something like a written out T-chart. And um, don't be afraid to try to flip people off a supplement because it can really help them out. But sometimes uh, they're scared to leave it and they just don't realize what they have to gain on the other side. I've seen some plan F's that are $300 a month. Crazy. And they can't afford it. I mean, it's, 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 it's really, really hard. Do you All right. pros and cons for like, this is a better choice for a supplement versus advantage? Yes, well that's what I do right here. When, this, when I start presenting this money maker, I tell them, Okay, these are, your, this is, these are your negatives, these are your positives. Now let's go over here to option two. This is the Medicare Advantage. This is your C. What are the pros for this? Come on, hit me. All the extra benefits. All the benefits. You get everything you see on TV, Mr. Senior, that Joe Namath has promised you, I'm gonna get that for you. What else? There's no what? There's no premium. Very few plans have a premium now. I can even get a PPO with no premium. Okay, so there's no premium. Oh, that's the primary reason they take this. There's no premium. What else? There's, it's built in with prescriptions. You don't have to pay a separate premium for prescriptions. Okay, uh, somebody mentioned buyback earlier. You, you, depend, you might be able to get a plan with a buyback of your Medicare premium of maybe 50. I think I've heard 75. What, what's it? Sometimes 150 on the buyback. That means that they get that $150 back on their check every single month, okay? So there's a lot of positives over here. What are the negatives? And it's, it's a perceived negative. It's not really a negative. What do you got? Your hospital provider may not be a network. It's, it's network-based. You gotta check the network, okay? Then you gotta, yeah, exactly, that does happen a lot. Doctors will be on the plan and then the next year they want out. It, that does happen a lot, okay? You, they do put, a, a, um, they do put a, uh, a maximum that you're gonna spend in a year, the maximum out of pocket. The other negative, and it's not a negative, guys, it's just the way the plans are. You're not paying the premium, but you're gonna pay as you need it. You have co-pays, okay? But the co-pay for a primary doctor is what? Usually it's zero. A co-pay for a specialist, 20 bucks, 25 bucks. You'll have co-pays for your hospital. So you're gonna have co-pays and you're gonna have co-insurance that you're gonna have to deal with. You mentioned cancer. Cancer with most plants is a co-insurance. They have to pay 20%. But I have a way to, to take care of that. So I will do this, guys. I will present this and this, and then guess what I do? Here we go. They have to pay a hospital copay. Yes. Now what? I present to my senior guys and I let them tell me what they want. Literally. And I sit there and, I'm, and, and you think I'm joking with the music. I play this. Okay. So they're sitting there like, yes, I love it. So they're sitting there and they're like, hey, so what do you want? Which way do you want to go? Because guess what? I'm going to make money if they go here. I'm gonna make money if they go there. I don't care. 
Now, I will guide them. What if they don't have a lot of money, but they're going through cancer? Which way do you think I'm going to push them? I'm going to go here all day long. Get this, take care of your cancer, beat it, and then we can move you here later. You're going to pay less for your cancer when you're over here. Plus, a lot of the cancer treatment, the, the, the high-end ones, don't take Medicare Advantage plans. Okay? So, they don't pay those Medicare, they, 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 it's just not in there. It's just, so I will guide them here all day long. If they're not going through cancer, I don't care. What do you want? What can you afford? Well, I would love this, but I can't afford the premium. Don't worry. Let's get you set up. Let's, let's talk about this. Now, what do you think I'm going to do when that happens? Once we get here, there's something I got to do to stay compliant. Scope, scope. scope them, baby. Scope them. I, I'm not, I don't scope them. When, you know, when I do all this, when you walk into a senior and you put a piece of paper on there and they say sign it, they're going to look at you like, I'm not signing anything. They, they're, they're thinking you're, you're going to take over their house. At this point, they have no issues. I've educated them enough. I'm like, here. Here's what I need you to do. I got this stupid government form that get that's gonna that I need you to sign and initial so that I can have the permission to talk to you about what, what you want me to talk about. So if you don't mind, just sign it. Okay, you gotta scope them, guys. I've been through so many complaints with agents. Never once have I got have I seen a question that says, when did you scope them? The question is, did you scope them? Present the scope. Okay, now if you want to scope them before this, that's fine. I don't care. But at this point, if they've made the decision to go here, you scope them. Do I have to scope them if they go over here? No. For the drug plan. Not for the Medicare supplement, but for the PDP, yes. So I pull out the scope. It's a generic scope. I'll have them sign it, and I'm going to rock on. All right. Here's something else that is in my smart book. Do you think these seniors know the difference between an HMO and a PPO? No. They don't know. All they know is the, P the HMO sucks. They've heard the nightmares. I'll educate. The HMO doesn't suck. Okay, a lot of people think, oh, my friend had an HMO, they didn't pay. Probably because they went out of network when they weren't supposed to. Or they went to go see a specialist without a referral. So I educate. I have this little sheet in the book that will help educate the senior on that. All right, guys, this is important, guys. When, one thing on that yes, sir, go ahead. I don't want to skip over the HMO PPO thing too quickly. So we, we do hear from seniors a lot that PPOs are superior. It's in their brain that it's superior. Because in the 80s and 90s, you know, that was a thing. Maybe they were, maybe they were better. But especially going through COVID, doctors didn't want patients coming in their office. A lot of them still don't. So getting a referral over the phone or through a Zoom call, these doctor's offices have gotten much better, much more quick at giving referrals. Referrals are easy. Really kind of throwing out that whole thing of PPOs cost twice as much in general with less benefits. Well, what do the seniors want? Less cost, more benefits. The referral thing's not a big deal. And the not HMO all HMOs require referrals. Anthem doesn't. Exactly. So, so you know, the HMO versus the PPO, if anything, in the Medicare Advantage world, the HMO is king. It is fantastic. HMOs are richer. Okay, and you just heard over there from Anthem, there's no referrals. I didn't even know that. No referrals to see specialists. Hey, so when I say HMOs are richer, when I say that, what I mean by that is the co-pays and the co-insurances are less, and usually the benefits are, are bigger. They get more dental. They get more whatever. It's usually more better. Okay, my own language here. All right, so anyway, that's what I, I have that print out for them. All right, prescription drugs. Guys, when you are, this is, this is so 90% of the complaints that I help agents with are, are because an agent do, didn't do their job. When, when you send me, like, Reese, help me out with this complaint, my first response, did you do your job? And it's not being derogatory. What is the job that we have to do when we're talking about Medicare and, and, and enrolling a senior into a Medicare Advantage plan? We have two things we do. Docs and meds. That's 90% of the complaints. The other 10% is probably the old agent coaching the senior 
to put a complaint so he can take over the policy again. 90% of the eight, 90% of the complaints are doctors and meds. Okay. So on the medication portion, did you guys know that there's four stages? It doesn't matter if there is a prescription, if it's a PDP or it's an MAPD, this is the engine. This is the way it works. The very first stage is the initial. Okay, they call it, well, not the initial, they call it the deductible stage, stage one. Every plan has a deductible and they vary. The highest I've seen is 400 and something. I think it's going up to 500 and something. Okay, there's a deductible. Okay, every plan is different. Every carrier is different. Okay, most of the medications, and depending on the tier, there may be a, a deductible, there may not be. Usually generics will not have a deductible. But you have to explain that. Number two, you have the initial coverage. This is stage two. This is a bucket of money that they give you, Mr. Senior, and it's not a lot of money. Okay, it's 4,000 and what? 4,430. It's going up to what? Who paid attention on the AHIP? It's going up to? I didn't pay attention. I don't know what the number is. Does anybody know? I passed, but I, I don't know the number. I think it's anybody. Uh, it's going up anyway. I think I, th I don't even I don't think it's getting close to 5000. I'm thinking 4800 off memory. But anyway, you have a bucket of money, Mr. Senior. OK, it's not a lot of money, and, but it, it might be a lot of money. So when you go get a medication, OK, and, and, a, and it's a tier one, it's a generic and you pay zero or maybe you pay three bucks. OK. You pay $3 and that medication costs 97 or cost 100. So the insurance company pays 97. How much comes out of the bucket? Remember, the medication costs 100, the insured pays three, the carrier pays 97. How much comes out? What? The full 100. Right on the money, man. So the 100 gets deducted from that amount. Okay? And so. The seniors keep going, going. They, they keep getting medications and they're dwindling that amount. All right. So if you think that amount of money is a lot, try getting a, uh, a, a, a insulin flex plan, uh, flex pen, uh, flex pen. Those are the, uh, they're, they're a thousand and change. The cheap ones are 600. They can use that money. And usually if they're, if they're having to do that, guess what? They got more conditions to take care of too. So they can use that 4,000 and change really, really quick. Then what happens? They go into stage three, the dreaded donut hole. Okay, this is the coverage gap. This is what happens here, Mr. Senior, is you're gonna pay 25% of the cost. So that $1,000 medication, now they've gotta pay 250. What do you think happens in this stage? They, st they, they can't afford it. They start begging their doctor for samples. They're calling you and saying, this plan sucks. I can't believe you enrolled me in this plan. Switch me to a different plan. If you switch to a different plan, does this reset? Mm -mm. Doesn't matter. It's the same. Okay. So now they're in the donut hole. They got to spend a lot of money in that hole. Okay. How much in they spend? Check this out, guys. I put it in here for you. I, I kind of forget this, but when they're in the donut hole, the manufacturer covers 5%. So let, let's go to that $1,000 drug. The manufacturer pays 50 bucks. The insured pays 25%. The carrier pays 70%. So if you do the math, 25%, that's 250. 50 bucks from the manufacturer and 700 from the carrier. That entire thousand, if you do the math, it goes into this $7,000 that they gotta spend. Do the seniors keep track of that? Hell no. They get, a, they get what every single month that, it, that explains to them. They get a, an, an explainer, an, an explanation of benefits, an EOB that lets them know where they're at. Every single month they get it. Do they read it? No. All they know is that when they went to the pharmacy, that medication that they pay $47 for, they now have to pay $250. Guess what they do when they're at the pharmacy? They, with me, they, I get a 911 call. I tell them to text me. They're calling me, Luis, what's going on? Like, you're in the donut hole. Uh, I, I can't help you. Okay, they get out of the hole, they go into the catastrophic phase. At that point, they're paying chump change. And then what happens at the end of the year? It resets again on the first of the year. 
Okay? So, are agents explaining this? No. Nine out of ten agents aren't even discussing this with their seniors. I am. Now, the other thing that I will do, because I'm that super agent, guys, okay, nobody will take one of my clients. I'll come and, yeah, you, you have to hear from me, okay? I, I've, I've picked up the phone and called agents before, but my seniors, when I'm talking to them, do you have a criminal record? I, uh, <laughs> we're going to move on from that question. Yes, I've had some uh, restraining. No, I'm not. I'm not that bad. <laughs> I have enough business. I don't worry about it. You're, I, I, you're going to lose some. I'm like, I roll with it. I'm, I'll write more to make up for it. But usually when I lose seniors, it's because they die off. And I screw up. I'll call. Not supposed to call. But hey, they got multiple lines of business for me. And I'll call and I'll ask for John. Hey, John. Or whoever answers the phone and like, John passed away. Oh, my God. Some carriers will let you know that your client died. Some of them will not. Do you all do that? Do you let the agents know? Um, do you all know? Jeff, do you know? If it goes in, into your portal, it'll oh, uh, they, it will cancel like or... Or... Okay. I screw up all the time and call. Because I want to know, did they leave me? Why did you leave me? So when I call, can I speak to John? Oh, he died. I'm like, damn. I put my foot, I'm sorry, I didn't know. And then I go on with it. Now, but with my seniors, when I take my intake form, and I'm going to share that with you. I made a copy for everybody. When I collect the data from the senior, this is what I do. I find out if I can qualify them for LIS. All this that I talked about right here, guys, all this, you can forget it if they have LIS. You know what LIS is? Low income subsidy. Low income subsidy all right. If they qualify for low income subsidy, they're going to get one of four levels. And I, I was getting so many questions. They're on this level. Well, what does that really mean? So guess what? I created a chart. Okay, I put it in the smart book. If they're LIS level one, and they have a tier one or tier two drug, this is what they're going to pay. Okay? If they have LIS, you're going to change their life. If, you, if they don't have it and you give it to them on the, on the prescription side, you're going to save them anywhere between four to 5,000 in prescription cost. You can use that money for final expense. Use it for an indemnity policy. Okay, yes ma'am. Um, like how much are they allowed to make you? Well guess what, I have it in my smart book. Okay, I'm Why, because I got tired of calls from agents, so how do I qualify them? All right, so in the smart book, I have the LIS income limits. LIS is federal, Medicaid is state. So these are my levels for my state. You have to go to your state and get your own levels. When you get the smart book, when you partner up with us, I give you this page and it's editable. Okay, can't eat it, you can edit it. Okay, so you can go in there and edit the numbers for your state, but here are the numbers for LIS. It's federal. Mr. Senior, you're single. Do you make more than 1,600 a month? And do you have more than 15,000 in assets? And they'll laugh at me. I say, are you kidding? I barely have $100 at the end of the month. Perfect, let's enroll you. If they're a couple, they get a little, little higher limit. Has anybody ever done an LIS enrollment? Yep. How long? Two minutes left. You're slow as can be, dude. <laughs> God, you must be typing with one finger. Okay, five minutes. Okay, it's super easy. Four screens, it takes a couple of weeks for them to get approved. So easy to do. Okay, that is the one thing I will do for my seniors so they don't qualify. All right, so I'm doing that for them. The average agent is not. All right, next thing you need to be aware of, when can I write seniors? Okay, so the IEP, this means the, the, they're turning 65. What I created, this, came, this is my daughter's. She plays softball and she wears this on her wrist. So the coach gives her a, a code or whatever, do this. And she's like, you can put your election codes on there. <laughs> it's, uh, Don, you're the only one, I love you. You're the only one that laughs at my crazy, my crappy stuff. Guys, put, I, and guess what I did? I get calls, what election code can I do? So what do you think I did? I put all the election codes in the smart book, okay? So you have to know the election codes, all right? You have IEP, okay? Do you, did you know that there was an IEP two? Anybody know that? Okay, yes. there's a two, all right? There's AEP, okay? We're about to get into AEP. That starts in October and it ends December the 7th. 
Did you know that we have an OEP? Did you know there was an OEP too? There is not. Oh, hell yeah, there is. There is? Oh, yes, ma'am. I gotcha. When is the OEP too? Anybody know? So they age in in June. They have their own special three months to switch. One time. They call it OEP2. I've, I've used it before. So hey, you've got to know this, guys. What if you get into a senior's house and they self-enrolled into this crappy plan and you're catching them three months after? You can use OEP2 to flip them. All right? You've got to know the elections. Okay? Usually, the regular OEP is the 1st through the 31st of March. How about dual plans, guys? Uh, we're not age. The typical agent only sells during AEP. And then they sell, they do their thing, and then they go back to retirement. Okay, we sell all year long. Why do we sell all year long? Because we do duals. These are people that have Medicare and Medicaid. All right, they're beautiful. How about chronic plants? We can do chronics. Now, they're not everywhere, but what is the most common chronic condition that seniors have? Diabetes, Diabetes and heart issues. Most plants. Now, High blood pressure, high cholesterol, those are not, they are chronic conditions, but they're not chronic conditions that qualify for most chronic plants. It's usually diabetes and certain cardiovascular conditions. You're checking me out, right? Are you verifying OEP too? No, I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Check it out. All right. Okay. Also, guess what? If they didn't have LIS and I enrolled them in LIS, LIS creates its own special election. All right. What else do we have as far as special elections? Yes, sir. I actually have a question about LIS. Hit me. So whenever you're enrolling a prospect, is it, is, are they eligible to use that special election period upon submission of the application or no. upon acceptance? I don't, no, you have to wait the three weeks. Okay, so, so I can't fill out a, uh, like a Medicare Advantage plan application until after they've been accepted and have the acceptance letter from the LIS program, correct? If, if you have no other election to use, you got to wait. Okay, so if you, you, you enroll them with any of the other elections that we talked about and later they get LIS, what happens, guys? Do they get an LIS card? Has anybody ever seen an LIS card? Okay, there is no LIS card. All they, it's a benefit. What happens is on the back end, their, their prescription engine changes. It changes for their, for their benefit. But if you're in that house and you have nothing to enroll them in, you got to do the LIS and then give it three weeks. What I will do is every week I'll set a reminder for me to call the carrier and see if they got it. Because that senior three weeks later is going to forget me. Right. So I will check every, every, I have all their info already on my intake. So what I will do is on the, the next week I'll call, I'll call a carrier. Hey carrier, I've got John Smith. Here's his info. Can you verify they got LIS? And they'll tell you. As soon as, I'll know before the senior knows. When they tell me, yes, they got it. I get the level and I'm out the door. Hey, John, I'm on my way. You got LIS. I'm on my way to enroll you. I want to get to them before any other agent does. So you just got to put it on your, on your tickler to, to, to notify you every single time or every week to double check. So I'm curious because, for example, like I've written a lot of United Health in the past. And so they have, they'll show you 14 days after whether or not they got accepted within the portal. So I can verify whether or not they got accepted. Yes. So if I know for a fact, based off the requirements and the eligibility with the income, that they're going to get accepted and I know it's going to get flagged in about 14 days, let's say it's the fourth of the month, and I'm enrolling them to start on the first of next month, would that still technically not make sense or not? I'm kind of straight away from that, but I'm curious yeah. about how that works. I mean, I guess you could put it in there and let it pend. Yeah. You could. I don't do that. I mean, you, you, you never know. They may be making, the, 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 they have the limits, but there's other factors. The one factor that I've seen that gets seniors kicked out when they know they qualify, what if they co-sign on a home loan for a kid? Now their asset level is off the chart. They won't get it. There's some scenarios I've seen where I'm like, why, why didn't they get it? They qualify. I know that they show me their bank account. They only have 100 bucks, and they're making less than the 1600 and they still get denied. Yes, you're taking a risk. You're putting them into an LIS plan that has a premium, and you said no premium. They don't get accepted into LIS. They're going to be paying a premium. They may have a high deductible, prescription deductible that they have to deal with that first month. 
So, I mean, I do it, and most of the time it works, but there's been one or two cases that have. Yeah, so you, it, it depends on, what, on how you want to roll with it. Yes, sir? Sorry, some of the things that used to work after COVID doesn't. It's taken Medicare 90 days or better to generate a Medicare ID number. It's taken Medicaid, the state systems, three months, four months at times to actually qualify someone. So if it used to work, it may not. I mean, it's, it's definitely dangerous, like you're saying. You've got to be careful because what Anthem will do, I'll get your application. We're going to automatically close it. You're going to get a notice that it's closed. Your member's going to get a notice that it's closed. That's going to freak everyone out. But in about a week or so, whenever we take the manifest, if they're now eligible, we automatically approve the app. But you're starting on, you know, you've got to be very careful about that. Does that require resubmission? No, it doesn't just it's still within the same window. But if it takes two months to get an app, we'll have to resubmit. All right, so case by case, you got you just got to make the decision. I don't. Now, I have a, I have an office. Most of my people are used to coming to me. So, I'll pick up the phone like get your butt over here, Mr. Senior. Let's go. So, if I were driving out a lot, uh, maybe. All right. So, the other thing, guys. So, you saw all the money that we made, right? Okay? On the on the on writing these plans. So, we do not want to leave any money on the table. What other money can we make selling MAs? HRAs, baby. Health risk assessments. What's y'all's uh, amount? We pay $100 on D6, 50 on non -stick. Damn. An egg, and is it charge backable? No. Nope. Okay. So, guys, after you complete the app, what? Okay, I like that. I got plenty of time. In fact, that's too much time, David. All right, I'm putting people to sleep. No. Look at that. I already got a guy. He's, he's taking off. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> I've had it. <laughs> All right. So, Guys, after you complete the application and you submitted it, you're going to get the ability to complete a health risk assessment. All of this is, guys, it's not underwriting. It's a way for the carrier to get to know your customer a little bit more. You ask these questions. Yes, no, you fill it out. Five minutes, you're done. You make an extra 100 bucks. You're slow, Luis. 30 seconds. Uh, 30 seconds. There we go. I'm the slow one. Man, you're right. You, you got me on that one, bro. <laughs> So extra money, what do I have there? 50 to 100 bucks. I did hear some carriers paying 125, but you're 150 or 100? We're 100 on these Okay, so extra money, guys. Chad, how much was your HRA check? Uh, end of February, it was all United, so it was 50 bucks a pop, not 100. It was 10, 10,000. Serious money. That's some serious money, guys. I'll pay, pay for your leads, hell yeah. <laughs> That'll pay for some leads there. Exactly. That's a lot of money. All right. Besides the HRA, is there any other money? Yes. All right. I do this, guys, and you can do it compliantly. All right. So I, when I'm talking to my seniors, part of the presentation that you're doing is you're reviewing the summary of benefits with them. Okay, you're going over item by item. When I get to the hospital copay, Mr. Senior, if it's a PPO, it could be about $300 a day for six days. Mr. Senior, do you have $300 a day to pay for this? Because you're going to get a bill for this. Remind me at the end of the conversation to tell you how I'm going to take care of that. Okay? I continue with my summary of benefits, and I get to the ER, the emergency room. You have a $90 copay when you go see the emergency room. You want to make some money when you go to the emergency room? You want to get paid to go to the ER? Remind me. Remind me how I can do that at the end of the presentation. Then I continue on the presentation and I get to the uh, ambulance. What's the ambulance copay for y'all's plan? 95. 95? 295. 265, I've seen different numbers. Is that for air and ground? Just ground. Air may be a percentage. Depends, okay? But I'm going to tell them I can cover $200 of your ambulance copay. And then I'll continue with the summary of benefits, and then I'll get into a very touchy subject cancer. Okay? In, how, do y cover, how do y'all cover therapeutic radiation? Percentage or copay? Depends on the plan. Okay. Jeff, what is it? Jeff? She, she threw you under the bus, bro. Let's go. 
<laughs> there we go, we got them both. All right, usually it's a copay with some carriers, some plans. Sometimes it's a 20% coinsurance. So every time you go get a treatment for radiation, for chemo, you're gonna be on the hook for 20%. Had a buddy, prostate, 20 treatments, 20%. It adds up, guys. Do you have 20% to pay? Most seniors, again, what did I tell you? At the end of the month, they have 100 bucks. Okay, what about all the medications? Yes, sir. I'll get to that. I usually don't, it's too expensive. I priced myself out and I killed the cell, normally. Okay, so he asked, do I add skilled nursing? Usually with skilled nursing, here's what I have found. Skilled nursing is covered for the first 20 days on their plan. These skilled nursing facilities get these people out in three weeks. Because they know after that they gotta start collecting a hundred and something hours and they're not, they're not gonna get it. So they give them the boot in three weeks. That's what I normally see. All right, so I'll go into my indemnity and I'll tell them, hey, my, remind me at the end of the conversation how I can take care of your cancer. If you get, if you're diagnosed with a life-threatening cancer, I'm gonna write you a check. Me, I'm gonna write a check out to you. All right, so we go through the presentation. I, I sign them up on the plan. I do my HRA and then I play dumb, which is not hard to do. I will sit there and like, God, this is a senior. There was something I was gonna talk to you about. I don't remember, it was, do you know? And uh, you were gonna talk to me about uh, how you're gonna take care, oh yes, yes, that's right. They asked me for it, okay? Sales skills, it's a, I got a plan for you. Now, I like to use this company, and this is just me. You've got two options. You can use Heartland National. GTL is coming on super strong. There's medical, there's Aetna, I mean, you pick whatever you want, okay? But I like these guys because they're super easy. Check this out. This is a sample summary of benefits. Can you write on the summary of benefits? As an agent, can you touch it? Can you, can you highlight it? No, but they can. So I have a kit, I'm presenting to them. I will have them put a check mark. Okay, here are my check marks, okay? So I will tell them, you know, remind me, you know, remember, I'm gonna take care of these for you. Might be a little hard to see, okay? But look, look, look at the rates for these plans, guys, okay? This is without, uh, no, this one's without cancer. In my area, it's $100 a day for seven days. Um, I've added $200 on the ambulance. It's got a built-in ER, 12 freaking dollars a month. You suck if you can't sell somebody a $12 plan. I mean, you are a bad salesperson, okay? You can't convince somebody to spend 12 bucks, really? You suck, okay? <laughs> All right, now I will tell them, what about cancer? I'll throw in 10K of cancer, I can go up to 20,000. 10K in cancer, I'm at what, $41 a month. I can't afford 41. What do I do? Huh, do I quit? I got, kid, I got three kids, I go to McDonald's, I spend 50 bucks on Happy Meals. I gotta eat, I gotta feed, I eat. So what do I do, I give up if they can't afford 40? What do you think, what do you think I, I do? I tell them, well, what can you afford? Can you do 35? No, how about 30? Most of my seniors take the $31 plan. Okay, what I do is this goes into increments of 1,000. So I start lowering the number to fit, to fit that 30. They enroll, when you, if you get cancer, you call me, I'm gonna write you a check. Matt had a plan, what did your client do with her cancer money? She beat it. She always wanted a carport. She got enough money to build her carport. Hey, you never know, okay? The, what, what do they do with that money? Well, they help meet their maximum out of pocket. What about all the cancer drugs that you mentioned that are gonna be high cost? They can use that money, it's a check. They do whatever they want with it. What if they're not gonna beat the cancer? They wanna take that last trip with their family, they got money, okay? They wanna go to Canada, they wanna go to Europe and do the latest and greatest treatment. You think Medicare is going to cover that? Hell no. They're not going to cover it, guys. What's my what? Heartland National. Okay. And guess what? They pay commissions in like two or three days. So while you're waiting in AEP to get paid in January, these guys are already putting checks in your account in two or three days. GTL is the same way. So I'm not, you know, I'm not pushing one or the other. You pick what you like. 
but either one of them will work. David, most of the agents with you are signing up. Are they doing both? Or are they leaning more one way or the other? What? Okay, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, yeah. so on the indemnity plans, are, are the agents, your agents, are they, are they doing more Heartland, or more GTL, or both? They're not doing enough. There, well, there we go. You're not doing enough. Okay. So, guys, I, honestly, I have no idea why agents don't do it. That, yeah, that's the beauty of it. Yes, when I throw the cancer in here, it's one company, one premium payment. I'm not, I'm not separating it. So, it's easy. It's, a, it's an a la carte and uh, renewals on that. Yes, lifetime renewals. You can add skilled nursing. He asked me earlier, am I adding skilled nursing? It is here. I can add wellness. I can add dental and vision. Uh, I can do, you know, I just, what happens is, is I price myself out. Usually I want to take care of three things and cancer. Yeah, and then um, regarding, like, say they do the $31 plan, so what would be like the advance or renewals? How would that normally work? Commissions? Yeah. David? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I don't study it, I and mean, I just love my checks. What, okay. what was the question? The, the commission levels and the renewals. What do they look like on hospital indemnity? Uh, that's a good question. I think anywhere. Like 40, 50%? Yeah, I was going to say 50 to 60, somewhere in there. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Good. yeah. Damn good, man. Yeah. Shoot. I love my, my indemnity checks. They're coming in every month. Party money. Okay. Serious party money. Mortgage money. Okay. All right. So you can offer that. Okay, is there underwriting? Depends. 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 Okay. What what does it depend on? Age. Age. When they're enrolling. If you're getting them when they're uh, six months before, six months after they turn 65, that one year window, guaranteed issue for the hospital side. GTL what? It's what? I'm sorry. 68. Okay, I didn't know that. So usually it's a one. It's usually it's a, that one year underwriting. It is full underwriting for cancer, regardless of the age. There's two questions, and it's a five year look back. So, so the the, the this portion the uh, the the hospital well, without cancer, it's guaranteed issued the first year that they're, that they're turning 65. Six months before, six months after, the cancer is fully underwritten. Two questions. Have you had it in the last five years and some other one about five years? GTL, I haven't done a lot of GTL. I, I just had them on, on, on one of my calls and I was like, wow, this is pretty damn good. But I, I can't remember their underwriting. I haven't put, anybody done GTLs? So it's, you're saying 68, no underwriting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. well certain states are pretty. Okay. Most states they added to 68. Okay, so it depends on your state. All right. Yeah, and guys, this is the what's what is the worst thing that can happen? I, I, I got married, but I went through a couple of <laughs> women uh, that said no. It's not that bad <laughs> to get rejected. Okay, it's really not. All they say is no. Sorry. Okay, so why agents don't offer it? I have no idea. What's the worst thing that a, that a senior can tell you? No. no. Not no. What does no mean? No. <laughs> Not for us. <laughs> really? No? Uh, I know I am. I'm always in trouble, girl. Okay. No means not now. All right. All right. I'm going to come back. You got to be persistent. All right. I'm going to come back. All right. Can I hit you up in six months? Maybe things get better. Maybe you're, you'll realize the importance of this. Maybe you'll go through a few expenses. Or maybe your friend will go through cancer and you'll see what it costs. Then may you, maybe you'll call me. So no doesn't mean no. No means not now. All right. Yes, ma'am. And, and so now you're going in with Medicare Advantage. You're telling them zero, but then you add these plans to it, so it's not necessarily zero. It could be 30. It could be 12 bucks. It could be 30 bucks. Now, th compare that against the med sub rate. I mean, I understand that. Yes, compare it against the med sub rate of 135. Also, check this out. How much is an employer plan, if they're working 65, what do you think their group plan insurance costs? Five, 600 bucks for them? They may be paying a thousand and change for their family. They're used to dropping some money. Yes, ma'am? No, you're saying that five to a thousand dollars. A month. 
a month that they could be paying on an employer plan. They, they, uh, uh, most companies don't give you insurance for free. They, they match a portion of your premium. You, they have to match at least 50%. So you're, if your premium is 800 bucks, they're paying four, you're paying four. Okay, so they're, they may be coming from that world and you wanna throw them a $30 premium? They could be paying premiums over there. Okay, so don't be afraid to ask for the money. And here's the deal. If you aim low and then you wanna go high, is that good or bad? Right. It's harder to go from low to higher than it is to go from higher to lower. So start high and work your way down. You can't afford 40, what can you afford? Okay, can you afford 35? You know, work your way down. If they can't do it, they can't do it. Sell the $12 one, who cares? It's not that bad, so you're still gonna make a little something. And guess what, in this industry, you all know what a hook is? Okay, the more hooks you have on somebody, the longer they stay with you. One line, usually that has a shorter period that they're gonna stay with you. You get two hooks in them, they stay a little bit longer. So put more hooks on them. Three, Three it, 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 until they die, okay? Also, here's the other deal, I suck at this. Okay, I'm terrible at this. I need to get so much better. I'm gonna have the GTL people train us a little bit better on this. And do you all know what this thing is? Long-term care. But it's not long-term, it's short-term. Short-term, and do you know that this is free? And you make full commissions. I'm not kidding. Short-term, all right, check it out. All right, so how many of our seniors would rather get their care at home than somewhere else? Most of them, okay? So GTL has this short-term home health care plan that is free. So why the heck do we not offer it? I tell myself that, why don't I offer it? Well, because I, I, I'm, I'm in a hurry. I've already done this and this, and I'm afraid to ask for one more thing, but I need to start becoming unafraid. All right, check it out. So with this, with this plan, they're able, if you go up here to the top right, they have plan A, plan B, plan C they recommend that you sell the plan B. They get $600, let's see, hold on here. No, 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 forget that, I'm sorry, right here. Plan B, they get $300 a day that they get to utilize to pay for home health care. Okay, and there is a premium to it, but I just said it was free, right? There's a premium to it, but here's the deal. There is a drug benefit. If they're on plan B, Okay, which they recommend, it's about $48 a month. If they're on plan B and they take, let's see here, where is it? If they, right here, look right here, it's kind of hard to see. If they take five generic drugs, they will reimburse them 50 bucks. If they take two brand name drugs, they'll give them 25 times two, 50 bucks. 50 bucks times 12 is $600. If the premium is 48, and they're giving them 50 bucks in reimbursement, is the plan not free? Do the math there. Are they okay. them a check or are they just taking it out? Of the it? problem is, this is the problem, is that at the very most, the senior has to pay the $48, and at the end of the year, they get the 600. They don't have the $48 to do it. I wish they would do it monthly, but they will not. They told me that the very most, if, if they have to, they'll do it every, uh, twice a year, every six months. That's the only problem. So the senior has to pay for this thing and then at the end of the year, they go to the pharmacy, they get a list of all their meds, they send it to the company, the company will send them a check. It's free. I'm, I'm very guilty. Well, all, no, they don't. All they do at the end of the year, they go to the pharmacy, give me your printout. It, it's super easy, okay? So you can offer it. I, I suck, I just, I don't do a very good job with that. Here are the rates, guys. So, I don't wear my glasses. Um, right here, base rate, look right here, 65 year old, 46.97. Y'all see that? That's the base rate. So they're, if, they, if they're taking five generics or two brand names, it's free. Why don't we offer it? Well, usually, because I got too much going on. I got you guys calling me all day long, okay? Not a bad thing, that's what I signed up for. But yeah, I'm, after I've done the, the, the hip, and then guess what? Can I do life insurance? 
Not at this appointment. But guess what I do? I make an appointment 10 minutes later. <laughs> it's another appointment. Hey, I'm not, uh, hey, there's gray in this. What did you sell at the time of the appointment? Medicare Advantage and hospital indemnity. What did I do with the life insurance? I set another appointment for 10 minutes later. I put it in my calendar so I have it documented. If you guys are at a home, go to your car. Go chill out for a few minutes. Say, you know what, I gotta move some appointments around. I wanna help you out. Good. Give me about 10 minutes. Let them go to the restroom, take care of some business. You go to your car, go sit there, relax, come back in 10 minutes, okay? You didn't sell that life insurance at the appointment. Yes, I'm in some gray area there, but hey, I haven't gotten in trouble with it. So I, I'm an agent like you guys. All right, here's some more music, come on. Okay, so who is ready to jump on Medicare? If you're not doing it, guys, and I didn't convince you to do it, I suck, okay? But you should wanna do Medicare, guys. It is incredible. If you're doing it, but you're not really doing it at a high level, guys, you see the money potential. There's a lot of money to be made with Medicare. And here's the deal. Our seniors need our help. They need us, guys. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of uh, uh, call centers that these guys don't give a flip. They know they will never talk to that senior again. There's no relationship. They just want to get that cell and move on to the next one. Okay, what are the odds that that senior can call that call center and get that same agent? Okay, these call centers are awful, in my opinion. Okay, they will flip a client just to make that money. That's why we're having to deal with this recording crap. So, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the recording. Okay, there's a lot of, uh, we have to record our calls. Sorry, it's the way it is, guys. If you're face-to-face, -face, you don't have to. Okay, if you're a face-to-face -face agent, you don't have to record them. If you're a telesales agent, you're gonna have to record. It is what it is. Are you worried about it? Who's worried about it? Shouldn't be worried about it. If you're doing your job, what do you care? If you're not doing your job, you, you should worry if there's a complaint. Did I make you mad? <laughs> you, you're, you're done with us? No. You coming back? Yes. Promise? I'm not gonna, I'll wait for you, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bye. <laughs> All right, so um, the recording, guys, if you, you record it, it's not a big deal. Now, we have a tool. Okay, when you get with us, we're going to give you a tool called Sunfire. Um, I don't use it, but I'm going to. The reason I didn't use it was because I did not have the ability to do an HRA with it. Yesterday, we we're having dinner. I was told, how many carriers are going to be on the platform? Like, for HRAs or carriers? For HRAs. Four. Four carriers. So the reason I didn't do it, because my primary carrier did not allow me to do the HRA when I enrolled them in Sunfire. And I'm not giving up 50 bucks. I make a lot of money, but I still want my 50, okay? So now with United, Aetna, Anthem, Anthem well, care. well Care, you can do the enrollment on Sunfire and now have the ability to do the HRA on their platform. Okay, it's good, that's good news. The Sunfire is an is a incredible enrollment tool. And in addition, what else, Andy? You have an opportunity to make more money on top of the HRA, on top of the indemnity, on top of the short term that could be free. There's a little more money potential if you do value-based care. I don't know what it is. Okay, I found out yesterday. I'm going to a training next week. Once I get it, I'll push it to you guys. But Andy, you want to talk a minute? Give them a quick little one minute. Okay, hold on. So this year, um, we are doing a test run with Sunfire, uh, especially in the Georgia market. Agents are familiar with partners like Oak Street. Um, in the past, some uh, agents might have experienced uh, referral opportunities with Oak Street or membership opportunities with Oak Street, which is a value-based care, uh, provider care opportunities. Um, so this year internally with Sunfire, they are specifically, it's purely educational. So you're talking about what is value-based care, uh, what are the value-based care partners in the market, and either pushing the data transfer opportunity to that value-based care partner 
or a live transfer through Sunfire, they will pay an actual fee. Um, it's not a referral to that partner. It is a purely educational moment in their eyes. So all you're doing is educating your clients on what value-based care is. Um, it's through using Sunfire, super simple. Um, you don't have to complete an enrollment to actually get this. You can actually uh, go straight to the value-based care portion so if you don't get an enrollment, um, they, are, they already have the right plan they're looking for. You still have that value-based care opportunity to discuss with them and still uh, walk away with a fee. And that fee, and that fee is? Do we want to announce it? Uh, I think it's forty. Yeah, forty extra bucks, guys. Is what, Educational. Only? That's it. Well, value-based care in the Georgia market or places like Oak Street Health or Shenmue, which are yeah. So in South Carolina, there's different ones. They're so doing like house calls or something. Some do house calls. Okay. Some right. do community-based primary care opportunities that might be in that community. Uh, it's a lot of people that don't have a primary care provider. Uh, they can get their drugs filled there. It's really more of a community-based okay. provider. You just refer it, they take it, or not, you still get the 40 bucks. 40 bucks, guys, start, at, start doing the math. You make money on your MA, you make money on the HRA, you make money on the indemnity, then you make an extra 40 over here. You're making some change. You're making some damn good money. I'm gonna be all over that thing. I don't use Sunfire, but I'm gonna start. Okay, especially with United jumping on board. All right, so the final thing. Why are you not gonna do this if you're not doing it? Is there a reason why you wouldn't? All right, so let me tell you what we do for you. Okay, who is not doing it? Is somebody, get, you're not doing it? Are you gonna do it now? Okay, all right. So those of you that are doing it, guys, you, you just gotta pump up the levels, okay? So here's what we do. This is what I need you guys to do. You all got my cell. Okay, when you partner with us, you get me, all right? I'm, I'm your guy. I'm the guy who's gonna unstuck you. Okay, that's the way it is. You're gonna call me, you have that access. The other thing that I need you guys to do is you need to plug into our training, all right? You new people especially. I've got an eight-week course, okay? It's on Zoom. It's on Thursdays, every Thursday, 8.30 a.m. Central. You gotta be on GroupMe to get the link for the class. Okay, so if you're not on GroupMe, you're not plugged in, you know, it's like you're, you're a ghost. I can't help you. Okay, so what I ask you guys to do when you get contracted, you send me a text with your name, your phone number, well, it's got your phone number, your email, and then tell me your city and state that you're in and who your upline is. I want to know who, who you're working with. I put you as a contact and then I add you to GroupMe. Now what you're on the GroupMe, the biggest thing that I want you guys to do on GroupMe is not be a fly on the wall. Ask questions. We got some superstars in there. We got agents that we monitor it and these guys are, I mean, they usually beat me to the questions. So I make sure that they're answering the questions correctly. Okay, so great platform to ask questions. And then when you're in front of a client, remember I tell you guys, be respectful of my time. Now, I, I don't like to take calls, well, you know, hypotheticals, no, 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 no. When you're with a client and you're stuck, you call me. Yes, sir. Yeah, so when does the next eight weeks start, or how does that work with the It day? recycles. Okay. So you'll hop in, but we have all the calls recorded. Okay. So you, once you're in there, you'll ask Matt. He's hiding somewhere as usual. Ask him to give you access to Dropbox. Okay. And you can pull the recordings. Okay. okay. I have an eight-week course. Also, in Dropbox, you'll get the book. Guys, this book costs 10 bucks to go print out in color. Okay, it's a great little book that you can wear to compliantly get into your, to your FE. You're doing FE and you wanna come in there, throw this in front of the client. Oh, you do Medicare? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. You compliantly got into the conversation. Check this out. Okay, you got some mask. Of course, we're not wearing mask that much, but you can wear the Ask Me About Medicare mask. We have guys that wear these buttons. There's some with a clip in the back I don't like to use, or you can use the magnet ones. Okay, that's how you can compliantly get into the conversations. Okay, um, so you get into my training, okay? You don't have to pay for it. You just, gotta, you just gotta ask for it. So you hit me up with your information, I get you. We make sure you have your contracts with us. We get people trying to sneak in from other organizations. So we make sure we verify who you are, and then we get you into the class, and you're in my training, and we get you set up. 
Okay, that's what I ask of you guys. If you don't hit me, then I, if you don't ask me for help, then I can't help you. Okay, so I, every Thursday I have that training, unless I'm on vacation, and we'll probably slow it down during AEP because I'm out selling. I'm like you guys. Okay, I'm in the fight with you. The other thing is every Tuesday, 8.30 a.m. Central, I will bring on an agent to come talk or I will have a carrier to come talk. Okay, I call it the sales and marketing call. If you're a seasoned agent and you don't want Medicare 101, go to the Tuesday call. Usually I will interview a rookie, somebody who sold their first plan, or I will interview an agent who at least is writing 10 applications a week. And I, and I dig into what they're doing, how they're doing it. I mean, that entire hour is for you guys to quiz them on what they're doing. And if they're doing 10 a week, that's 40 a month. That's 500 a year. These guys are smoking. Okay, we got lots of agents. Okay, so I have that for you guys on Tuesdays. You just got to plug in. We might be moving to a different platform. That might be in the works, but for now, it's group me. So with that being said, I'm done, guys.